Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft PowerPoint. What I want to look at in this session is some of the more common mistakes people make when they use PowerPoint to present. So I've got five different slides here which I'll introduce a different feature. First of all, the first slide, lots of people use PowerPoint just to do lists like this and basically uh, they may as well just write that as far as I'm concerned on a whiteboard rather than just using PowerPoint to create a presentation for a team meeting as, 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 as minuscule as this. So boring slides, quite often I go around different factories and different places and see people doing this every day and repeating themselves every day, recreating the thing. They don't even use a template. So PowerPoint is far, far better than just a, a white piece of paper with some text on it. The second one is too much information on a slide. I try and tell my classes when I'm teaching PowerPoint to keep th three points on a slide, but I don't expect them to put a whole paragraph of information on the slide. PowerPoint is there, if you're gonna use PowerPoint, it is there as a tool to help you do a presentation. It is not the presentation. You are the person delivering the presentation. You should be using your own skill to get the message over to your audience. Having all that on a slide is just a pointless thing. Too much information. Nobody is reading that at all. So it's not even worth putting that slide up. And what's even worse is when people bounce through that slide, they don't stay on that slide. You then have to ask if you're in an audience watching that, why did they have that slide at all? Next one. This is the most irritating thing of all. The person doing the presentation sits looking not at you the audience but at their slides and again they read what is on the slide now the reason they do this is because i think they don't actually know the content of what they're presenting so they're using this as a crutch but if you're sitting or standing watching somebody do that it is the most boring thing on the planet and it's totally totally not engaging and if you remember anything it will be a miracle so you need to avoid doing that what you need to do with this is if you need or not sure if you're not sure of the content you need to put it into notes powerpoint you can split the screen in powerpoint so you can see in present of you you can see what's coming next so you you would have this sort of information down here in the notes if i just copy that and paste it in there and then you can break this down with bullet points and only you will see this, nobody else will see this. And then what you would have, if I just break this down a little bit more, you maybe have three or four bullet points down here that you have to say on this slide. And all you have on the slide are trigger phrases, one-liners or even one word just to get you in the right theme. And then you, you say what's down here. And then other people, I haven't mentioned this, but other people then fill this notes area with masses of information, too much information for any presenter to remember or even try and suggest or speak in a presentation. So it's not just the slide that needs to be as a prompt. This also needs to be thought through, you know, bulleted, not too much information and um, don't try and reinvent the world by typing everything down here. This usually happens when you've got people doing a presentation for you and passing it around. Next one, embedding Word or Excel documents or any other project, uh, PDFs or whatever into a slide and expecting anybody to read that or understand that or that. Now, you can double click into these because they're embedded and it will open up Word. And that is how I would try and do it. If I need to show somebody a Word document, say a form that people need to fill in. I would print the form off and give each person a copy of the form so they can physically see it on the on their table or the desk. And same with this information, if I can. If I can't, what I would be doing then is I would be creating a, let's just double click on Excel, for example. I would be creating an hyperlink or a link to that file. So it's not a place in this document, it's an actual file. So I'm gonna just um, browse for something. I must have something in here actually, let's have a look. Um, I don't know what that is, but let's just link to that. 
So now you have a hyperlink, which doesn't work until you are in full presentation mode. But now I would be able to hyperlink into Excel and it will open that file. And then you would be able to have the full function of X, full functionality of Excel or Word or whichever program. And then when you finish, you just close that program down and you come back to this slide. It's a no brainer if you want to show a lot of information. So if you need to go through a process of lots of forms that people need to fill in, have the forms hyperlinked from the slide, go through each of the forms in Word or whatever program, and then come back to this slide. And then the next one is too many transitions and too many animations. So if I just go into presentation mode on this, this, this one, because I've already got lots of different transitions. So transitions is how one slide moves from another. So you can see this, I've got different ones going on and like so. And animations, these are the animations that you can get people get well carried away with animations. You've got to be careful. I've already said, don't be too boring when you're presenting, but that's your presentation style. But what you've got to be careful of is when you are doing animations or transitions is that they don't become the distraction that you're trying to avoid like that. Now I can remember my first ever PowerPoint presentation back in 1985. That's how long it's been around. And all I can remember from that presentation is the animation of the text going off left, right, above, down, wherever. And that's all I can remember. I was trying to guess what was going to happen next. There is a feature called random. You need to avoid that like the plague. What I try to do is keep everything fairly standard. So I use personally dissolve for transition and dissolve for all of these as well. So then things just dissolve in. If I just show you that, I'm not saying it's not in these first ones. So a lot of people don't know about it, but if you go down onto more entrance effects, you've got dissolve in there. And then if I put that slide into full screen, it's not doing anything weird and wonderful. It's just coming in on the mouse click and nice and easy like so. And then if I just escape that for a minute, what I do for transitions is exactly the same. So in this list, you've got dissolve again, uh, whatever it is, can't see it. Dissolve, apply to all slides, got a consistency of transition. You put this into full screen and then everything is dissolving on this. I'd have all the bullets dissolving and the slides dissolving. And you can see how that looks fairly professional. Now I only got the first slide to actually dissolve the bullets. But the text on this slide wasn't set to anything. It just appeared. But these are just a few of many, many um, mistakes that people make in presentations when they're using PowerPoint. And I'm sure people watching this will have a list far longer than the ones I've done, but it's just to highlight a few. So that's the end of this session. Thank you for your time.